everybody, it's Karen with Food and Family, and today we're having vegetables for supper. After a hard day at work, you want to come home and have something quick, easy, and delicious. But what better than a meal made of vegetables? Sometimes we just love vegetables. We don't have to have meat at every meal, and especially in the summertime when all the good fresh vegetables are coming in. Well, these aren't fresh out of my garden or from the farmer's market, but they came from somebody's garden and they were fresh when they were put up and d they're delicious. So we're gonna start by putting on a pot of fill peas with snaps. I'm gonna get those going. So, you know, there's two of us on a daily basis, so I don't cook a whole lot. There's enough peas in here for a couple of meals for us. So I'm gonna just cover it with water, just enough to cover it by about that much. I go down to my first knuckle and I'm gonna season with butter. You can use bacon, you can use ham, you can use whatever you want. I love butter and I use it a lot in place of bacon uh, sometimes when I'm cooking with bacon as a seasoning, it gets a little slimy to me. I don't like to eat it after it's been boiled in beans or anything. I love to fry it and eat it, but uh, that's why I use butter a lot. So my butter is salted, so I'm gonna lightly salt, and I might put a pinch of black pepper, but I don't wanna put a lot of black pepper in it. So I'm gonna cover these up. Get them started on the stove. Once they come to a bowl, I'm using Salad Master, so once it starts coming to a bowl, that little thing on the top will start jiggling, so it'll let me know that it's coming to a bowl. So I can um, turn it down. They don't take maybe an hour and a half to cook. So next, we're going to get started, we're gonna fry some corn. Have you ever fried corn? My granny fried corn a lot. Now she would cut hers off the cob and she'd get it fresh every year, cut it off the cob, put it in her freezer and her little freezer containers. And of course we'd go rob it out of her freezer and have it, but it was the best. I don't have any fresh corn to cut it off the cob, but I had frozen. Now this is white sheep head corn. To me, it makes the best fried corn. But if you have yellow corn, use it. It is delicious. But what we've got to do, since we're using frozen, and I can't cut it like I want to, I'm gonna have to um, grind it up in my blender. So, what I do, what I like to do, is this is a couple of cups of corn. So I'm gonna put, maybe not quite a couple of cups, but close. I'm gonna put most of it in here, and I'm gonna leave some whole. Just gives it a, a it's a texture thing, it gives it some texture. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit of water. Just covered a little bit of water, we're gonna cook it. That water's gonna cook down. So, put our lid on. I'm sorry, it's gonna be noisy. This thing is loud. So what I'm doing is I'm pulsing it and I wanna get it ground up in there and get it fine and um, it looks like my granny's. And I think that should do it. So let's get this off and look at it. Oh yeah, with my water, this is, I've got three cups total and that is perfect for us. Now, I don't know if you can see down in there real good to see how I've got it ground up. So, I'm gonna move 
this out of the way. Get clear our work surface. And then I'm going to set that, and we're gonna go over to the stove all at one time. So we've got that prepared. Let's go ahead and move it over here. We've got that prepared to go in our pan. So our next dish we're going to cook is some okra. You like fried okra? Oh, we love fried okra. Do you like green tomatoes? Fried? Oh, we do. So I'm going to have the best of both worlds. I'm putting green tomatoes in my okra. You've probably done the same thing. We just love it this way. Now, I went in, I had some green tomatoes from the market. I cut them up. Just stuck them in freezer bags, put it in the freezer. You've got green tomatoes when you want them. And I've probably got as many tomatoes as I do okra, but that's okay, because we like it. My husband loves fry, uh, fried okra. I think it's every other meal, he says, are we having fried okra? Are we having fried okra? Not today. I may have needed a bigger... Bowl. We're gonna make it work. We are gonna make it work. If I tried to let it thaw some, if some is still frozen and stuck together, then just take your fingers and pull them apart. They'll be all right. And see, I'm just stirring that together after I salted it. You salt how you want to your taste. See? Oh, now. We're in the South. We use cornmeal, not flour. At least in my household in Alabama, we do. Cornmeal, now I've got to say, I'm not knocking the flour because I do put a little bit of flour in it. I do put a little flour. Now I use white lily. This is white lily self rising flour. I think it's the best. This is white lily buttermilk cornmeal mix. Now, I know some will say, well, it's already got flour in it. Yes, it does. But I wanted to add a little extra. It has everything you need in it if you want to make cornbread, except for the eggs and milk. So we're going to stir this up. White lily is a white winter wheat flour. And I just love it. I've always used white lily. I prefer that over anything. If I'm ever any somewhere, uh, ever off somewhere, like vacation or something, we have a, a cabin or a condo, and I'm wanting to cook a meal. If I can't find white lily, I'll use something else. But I love my white lily flour and cornmeal. But you use what you want. And I realize it's not available everywhere. You can order it online. Um, I've never done that because it's available here. So I don't even know how much it is to order it online. Okay, see, I've got this good and coated with my flour and cornmeal. So now I'll set that aside. So then we're going to get everything prepared. Then we'll move over to the stove. Next, I'm going to peel potatoes for mashed potatoes. So we're going to have fried corn, fried okra, and grain tomatoes. I know it's a lot of fried at once, right? Um, got peas and mashed potatoes. I've got some homemade rolls that I made, I partially cooked, uh, partially baked and put them in the freezer. So I've got those thawing out and I will get those in the oven just before we sit down to eat. Okay, so I'm gonna peel these potatoes real quick. I love to use a knife to peel them. It's what I've always done. So the only time I use my Peeler is if I'm peeling a squash, a zucchini, or uh, carrots. I'm just used to a knife, 
and don't peel away the skin. My granny used to say, you're peeling it away too much. Don't go so deep into that potato. I, I think about her every time I peel potatoes. So we'll get this peeled. Get them cut up. We'll have to rinse them off because they are dirty. And we'll come back and wash our board down. Clean up as you go. And that way, when you're done cooking and you're done eating, you don't have as much to do. You're standing right here, so you might as well clean it up as you're standing here, all right? Won't take me but another second to get this finished. I like to pick, cut, when I cut up my potatoes, you, I'll show you. Um, for mashed potatoes, I cut them kind of thin and they seem to cook quicker. So, all right, let's do that. Now, let's get these peels out of the way. I've got a, just a grocery, plastic grocery bag here. Put my peelings in, keep it cleaned up, keep my mask cleaned up, and then when I'm done, I just take it all and throw it away. So, let me rinse these potatoes in my knife off real quick. I am just behind you. I don't know if you can hear, but my pot was wanting to start jiggling a little bit, so he's about ready to start boiling. So, okay. Let's get rid of that. And I shouldn't be doing this in my hands, y'all. That is not safe. I don't normally do that. I do fill it in my hands, but not cut it. Sometimes you get a little bad spot like that. Cut it out. It's, the potato's not hard. It's almost like the, um, the peeling, the potato is growing inside itself, is what it looks like. Um, it's not that it's uh, going bad, but this one's pretty deep. It's coming from the way down in there. It might have been supposed to have a brother. So get off of there. You're all right. You're not hurt. Okay, so let's start cutting it up. See, I cut kind of thin. Yeah, I'm acting like I don't know what I'm doing here. Now. See about how thick I cut them and just stick them in your pot. That little spot out. Finish cutting them up. So let me finish cutting these potatoes up. I'm gonna get them covered with water and I'll get us moved over to the stove so we can start cooking our corn and frying our okra and what peas are starting. Can you hear them? They're starting to jiggle. So I'll be back with you in just a minute, okay? Okay, we're at the stove and we're ready to get this stuff going, okay? My potatoes are on here. I just got them turned on. We're going to put a little salt in them. Potatoes don't come salted. And this is your best time to season them. The potatoes love salt and if you put it in your cooking water you can go ahead and get that salt flavor all the way through. So when you mash them up, prim them up, um, taste them since they leave a little more salt and usually mine do and then you can add a little more then but right now you've got the salt going through them. So let's cover that pot up, get it going. I know you can't see it, but our peas are boiling away over here. Cooking, this so good. We'll get our uh, eye going here for our corn. And I'm going to start with, remember the, the little bit that I kept out. I'm going to put it in there. And it won't take this but a minute to get hot. 
This is the hottest iron that I have. And then we're gonna pour this. Let me get rid of this. Um, yeah, that inside blade. That thing is so sharp. I'm afraid I'm gonna cut myself with it. Water and all. Pour in there. Scrape it out. Don't leave any of it behind. Let's see if I can get a couple little pieces left in there. We want to try to get them if we can. All right. Now, we're going to salt and pepper this. Did you hear that sizzle when I started pouring that in? So we're going to salt and pepper it. Again, it's not seasoned. I mean, pepper just makes it so good to so use as much or as little as you want. We like quite a bit of black pepper in our corn. Stir it up. Now this is just going to sit here. I'm going to get it started and then I'm going to turn it down uh, on a lower temperature and just let it slowly cook away. And this water will evaporate out of here and you'll be left with a pan of goodness. I'm not done. I'm gonna add some butter. I knew butter was coming. If you watch me, you know the butter is coming. And I'm using just a little over half a stick. Mm. It's good, y'all. It's gonna be good. Why? Well, I mean, what's not to love about this? Fried corn with butter peas with butter. We're going to get our okra started. Let's go ahead and be heating that pan up so we can get that okra frying. We got our potatoes going. We're going to have a meal here in no time. And you see, I've been going about 10 minutes and I'm done. Oh, got everything going except for the okra and we're fixing to get it going so we're going to today i'm using crisco i'm out of oil well almost out of oil i don't have enough to fry my okra in so we're going to use crisco if i had some lard i'd use that it's just good southern food We'll get that melted. So let me get this melted. And when it's melted and I'm ready to put the uh, okra in the pan, I'll come back and um, I'll show you how it's frying up. But I'm gonna show you when I put it in the pan, okay? Stay with me. While the oil is heating up for our okra and our corn is coming, to, uh, coming up to simmer, I'm going to show you how I clean my blender. It is the simplest thing. I washed, I rinsed out the extra stuff that was in there where I ground up the corn. So, put your little dish soap in it. Put you some water. You don't have to fill it all the way up. fit all the way in there. Pull it out to the stuff. The little stopper legs. Keeps it in place. Just rinse the extra off of the lid. Put your lid on. Close it. It's gonna be noisy. got a clean blender. How about that? So, just take it. See the little stopper feet on the bottom? Keeps it, keeps it in place. That's a good thing. And then we'll just rinse it out. Rinse that soap off. 
and it's ready for our next use. Watch the blade. I did not like washing that blade by hand. It is so sharp and I have cut myself with it before. I always try to sit it to where I'm not going to be touching it. So, and it's that simple. And that's how I clean my blender. I hope that was a good tip for you. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back over at the stove. Our corn is simmering. Can you see in that pot? I think you can. So we're going to turn it down just a little bit. I said, this is the hottest dye I have on this stove. And it's supposed to be that way. This is the hottest, the next to the hottest, medium, and that's the lowest. So I am going to Put my lid on. Salad Master, it'll let me know when it starts coming up to a good boil. We'll try, might turn it down some more. It's on one, it can't go too much further. So that our oil is coming up. I think if I turn this light on, is that gonna be too bright? I, mean, I don't think so. I'm gonna put a piece of ochre in it and see if it's sizzling. It's not quite ready yet. Um, Hang on, let me bring you over here so you can see. Give me just a minute and I'll just move the camera. Is that better? Oh yeah, you can see in there now. Can you see that piece that's starting to sizzle? It is ready. So we're going to slip this okra in. Try not to splatter yourself, which I just did, because it's hot. To get started, and then I'll just dump the rest of it in there. We'll go ahead and slip that in real easy, like yeah. Now you've got some cornmeal left in the bottom of the pan. That's okay. Now, see, we just pan fry it like that. Get that out of the way. Did you hear our pot? It wanted to jiggle for the corn. It's going to come up and start boiling in a minute. See if I can turn you down around where you can see that corn. Can you see that? Let's leave you right there for a minute and let you watch it. See, we're just going to come back and just gently give it a stir so we don't want it sticking. With oil and butter, it shouldn't, but sometimes it does. So, give it a gentle stir. See how it keeps coming back up to a bubble? Turn that light off. Is that better? I think that's better. So, we're going to cover it back up. So, you see that okra frying? I'm gonna get something to turn it with. When time comes, we'll use the spoon and we stir it up with. That's what I kept it out for. But just see how easy it was to clean my blender. It's cleaned up. My work surface is all clean. I did that while I was waiting for um, my pots to come up and get hot and ready for me to put my food in. So let's check our corn, okay? Ooh. You see it is just slightly, slowly, lightly simmering. Stir it up. I said we got to keep it from sticking on the bottom. Mm. <laughs> yeah, if you could just smell this kitchen right now. Oh. So let's come over here and check our okra. And I think it is ready to turn. Can you see that getting brown? See that? Mm. 
I know you can hear it. Oh, that's so nice and golden brown. And it smells so good with those tomatoes in it. Oh, it's making me so hungry. I can't wait for it to get done. And my buddy gets home from work. He is going to be so happy. Now, try to keep your handle pushed back so you don't accidentally bump it and um, spill it on you. And Bernie said, let's take a look at our peas. They are boiling nicely. I'm going to give them a little stir. The water's cooking down. I'm going to cover them all the way. I'm going to get a little water and add to them. And then we're going to come back in a few minutes after we let this cook a little bit more. And I will see you then, okay? We're ready to mash up, cream up our potatoes. Okay, so I drained them. They're, they're fork tender. I checked them. I drained them. Now I left them in this hot pot for just a minute because I want to let the water that I couldn't get off evaporate. And it did. You see, it looks, it looks kind of dryish looking. The potatoes do. Mm, a little heavy. So now I'm going to get it in my mixer bowl. I'm sorry, I couldn't hold it around where you guys could see. Let's get rid of that. Now, see all that steam coming from it? So we're going to put some uh, butter. Here we go again with the butter, right? Uh, that's about three tablespoons of butter. Now, have you ever used buttermilk in your mashed potatoes? It's good. Sometimes I use just sour cream and whole milk or 2% milk, whichever I have. And sometimes I use buttermilk. I happen to have buttermilk today, so we're going to use some buttermilk. Gives it a light tang and um, just makes it delicious. So let's get this mixed up. I like to use my whisk attachment. It makes them a little creamier, I think, and gets that, um, just gets them all whipped up real good. Hang on, I'm just, I'm gonna turn it up so it's gonna be noisy, maybe. All right, so now we're gonna add just a little bit of buttermilk. We don't need a lot, according to how creamy you like yours. I won't mind creamy, but I don't want them runny. I don't want them stiff either. Start slow. I don't want it to sling out all over me. All right, now this is ready. Put this in my serving dish. And that is a hot bowl, y'all. This one doesn't have a handle. I wish it did. Now it's coming out to you. I've got to say, they are some good stuff. Now, look at that. You see that? Mm -hmm. We're not done. You know me. You should by now. I'm gonna to top it with a little butter on top in order to get ready. I didn't show it to you, did I? Look at there. Ooh. So stay with me. I'm gonna go over here and check on our okra and corn, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back at the stove, and get you up here so I can talk to you. Hi. Okay, so we're back at the stove, and can you see how brown and golden our okra is coming along. Let's give it another toss. I've turned it a couple of times. It doesn't take it long to cook, I promise you. You, you see how I started my potatoes and let everything prepped in over here. My potatoes are ready. And this is about done. And our peas will soon be done. We're going to take this up here in just a minute. 
Let's look at her corn. I'll move you down so you can see it. Look at there. Look at there. You see it bubbling away. We're gonna. You see that? Let me get a spoon so you can see what it's looking like in there. You see? Oh my goodness. See that? Now that is a delicious bite. Oh my goodness. So we're going to cover him back up because we want some of that liquid to cook on the day now. So let's cover him up. I'm, I'm cooking him low and slow. So I've got my dish, paper towel line, and we're going to take this up. Let me move you back up. There you go. Now I can see your beautiful faces out there. I've missed you not being on here with me the last couple of days. I've missed you guys. So I had to come in and say, we got another video to do. When the honey gets here, this off the water gets here, we're going to feed him. And we'll get his reaction to this meal. I know he's going to be happy. Okay, so let's take it up. We don't want to get it hard. We want it good and brown, cooked through. The okra is soft. But if we keep frying it, it's going to get hard. And you do not want that. I can't wait for the okra to start coming in. It hasn't started coming in yet here. And uh, it shouldn't be long. Maybe another month and a half, month. And we're going to get some, and I'm going to put it up in the freezer. All I do is cut it up, put it in freezer bags, label it, put it in the freezer. Because I'll probably have it used before winter time. We love okra. Now, I'll show you this. Bowl. Now, white grease. I'm going to move it. Oh, it's noisy, isn't it? We're going to move that off the, from here. And I'm going to let this drain for just a minute. Look at there. Oh, my. We're going to let this drain for just a minute. And then I'm going to slip this paper towel out from under it. And so it don't sit and get, it'll stick to it if you don't. But we just want it to drain good. So I wonder if we can get a little bite. It's hot. Mm -mm -mm. I can't wait to dig into this with the tomatoes because I know they're going to be delicious. I can see it now. Mm. Oh, y'all, that's so good. Mm. We're going to have a wonderful supper tonight. I appreciate you joining me today. We're going to get these peas finished up. And they don't like much. They'll be done. And I'm going to let the water simmer out, simmer down from our corn. And when we get everything pulled together, I'll get a picture or I'll come back on and show you what it all looks like. And uh, then we'll fix this to plate and we'll eat them on a slice of uh, tomato. I've got some beautiful tomatoes at the market. I'm going to slice that up and um, heat up our rolls and um, have us a big glass of sweet tea. So thanks for joining me and I hope I see you after a while and um, join me again. Thanks everybody. Bye. Hey, we're back and we are ready to feed this man of mine. I made him a good supper of fried okra with green tomatoes, fried corn, Fill peas with snaps, mashed potatoes with lots of butter, and homemade rolls. That's hot. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. we've got some good sweet tea. I've got some sliced tomatoes. 
And uh, I want to show you all these beautiful tomatoes I got at the market. Can you see that? How pretty that is? Turn it around this way. You can really see a good slice. That is so pretty. And they're so good. And uh, so we're going to fix him a plate and get him fed. He's worked hard today. They're pretty, but they're not as pretty as you are. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna fix him some potatoes and give him some corn. We love vegetables for supper. And sometimes we just do that and skip the meat. So you want um, one or two slices of tomato. One's fine. One's fine. Yeah. If you can see the scratches on her arm, they came from what she calls her grand dog, a big German Shepherd. And he wanted to love on her and scratched her arms all up. Look at that beautiful plate now. All right, so we're ready to eat. Now I can fix yours. I'll fix mine, and you sit down. I'll be glad to fix And you. start eating, and I'll be right there with you. Okay. So, I'm so glad you guys joined me today. I really appreciate it, and I really love all the likes and shares that I've had lately. You make me feel loved, and uh, I really appreciate that. So I hope you'll join me again on my next video and uh, like this video, share, and subscribe, please. I would certainly appreciate it. Thanks, and we'll see you soon. Bye.